Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be explaining the four types of economic goods. With that said, let's get into it. So there's four types of economic goods, and these are classified by two criteria, excludability and rivalry. Excludability means that there's a way to prevent others from using a good or service. And normally this is by charging some amount of money for it. Rivalry, on the other hand, means that one person consuming a good or service prevents another person from consuming the same good or service. Now, all four types of economic goods can be classified as excludable or rival. And let's take a look at all four of them, starting with private goods. Now, private goods are excludable and they are rivalrous. This means that there's a way to prevent others from using it and one person using this good or service prevents another person from using it as well. Now, most goods that you think of are private goods. So a couple of examples would include if you buy a car. Obviously, there's an excludability to it. You can't just get a car, but it's also rivalrous, meaning if you're driving the car and you own it, then someone else isn't driving it and doesn't own the same car. Bottled water is also a private good because you have to purchase it and once you drink it, nobody else can drink it. So it's both excludable and rival. And one more example just to drive it home would be something like a smartphone. It's excludable. Again, you in this case, you need to purchase it. And anyone who doesn't purchase one can't use it. However, it's rivalrous because you can't all use the same smartphone at the same time. Again, most types of goods that you think of would be private goods. Let's take a look at the second type, which is common resources. Now, common resources are not excludable, but they are rivalrous. This means that there's no way to exclude people from using these goods, but the consumption of these goods by one person prevents another person from consuming. So this one's a little bit harder to understand than private goods, but let's give some examples. The first example is fisheries in an open or international waters. Anybody's allowed to fish there, and so there's no excludability. However, as more and more people start fishing there, the fish stores start to get depleted, and obviously fish that one fisherman catches can't be caught by another fisherman. Another example is public roads. Anybody can drive on them, walk on them, bike on them, so they're not excludable. However, they are rivalrous because it's a fixed amount of space. And obviously the more cars that are on the road, the more congestion there is. And if there's congestion, you can't be in the same spot on the road if another car is already there, at least not safely. And one more example, just to wrap your head around it fully, would be like free public Wi-Fi um, at a cafe, for example. Technically, it's non-excludable because anybody can connect to it. However, it is rivalrous. There's only a fixed amount of bandwidth and the more people who are connected, the slower the internet runs for everybody. So while anyone can connect to it, we're all fighting over the same bandwidth amongst each other. So enough about common resources. Let's take a look at the next type, which is public goods. Now, public goods are not excludable and they're not rivalrous. This means that anybody can use them and one person using them does not prevent another person from using the same good. So some examples of this are like national defense. The ability to be safe in your country is not excludable to anyone in the country. And if I'm safe in my country, that doesn't prevent someone else from being safe in my country. Another example would be like a public fireworks display, maybe around New Year's time, because anybody can look up and enjoy the fireworks. And just because I'm enjoying the fireworks doesn't mean you can't enjoy them as well. So they're non-excludable and they're non-rivalrous. And one more example would be something like streetlights. They light up the road for everybody. There's no barrier to use them, so there's no excludability, but also me enjoying the light from a streetlight and being able to see where I'm going does not prevent somebody else from using that same light. So once again, public goods are non-excludable and non-rival. Now the final type of good is club goods, and club goods are excludable, but they're not rivalrous, which means there's some barrier to consume the good. However, one person consuming the good or service does not prevent someone else from consuming it. Here's a couple of examples. A streaming service such as Netflix or Disney Plus charges you a fee to use the streaming services. So it's excludable because not anybody can stream these movies and shows. However, it's not rival, which means if I have a Disney Plus or a Netflix membership, that doesn't mean you can't have one as well and we can all enjoy it, but there is a barrier to use it and that makes it excludable, but non-rivalrous. Another example would be like a private gym. Assuming that it doesn't get too busy or crowded, I have to pay a membership fee, which makes it excludable, but me using the gym doesn't prevent others from using the same gym. Again, this is assuming that it's not too crowded and along that assumption would be my last example, which would be toll roads. If there's no congestion on toll roads, then there's a barrier to use them, that's the fee to drive on them. 
However, one person driving on them doesn't prevent another person from driving on the roads as well. Again, assuming there's no congestion and that's what separates public roads, which was our example as a common resource and private roads or toll roads which would be a club good because there's a barrier to use them. And this is in this case, a fee or a toll. So once again, club goods are excludable, but they are non rivalry. I hope that this video helped you understand the four types of economic goods. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel. And of course, let us know in the comment section, what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.